May the Lord Almighty bless and keep you wherever you may be. We give you thanks for tuning in to our worship service on this, the 15th Sunday after Pentecost, September 10th, 2023. May God bless you real good in all that you do, and may all that you do find a way to give glory to God. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins... God, who is faithful and just, will forgive them and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us do so now. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows upon them his Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The first lesson for this Sunday comes from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 33, verses 7 to 9. The Lord God appoints Ezekiel as a watchman, and that comes with some responsibilities. Now, mortal man, I am making you a watchman for the people of Israel. Therefore, listen to what I say and warn them for me. If I announce that some wicked people are sure to die and you fail to warn them to change their ways, then they will die in their sins. But I will hold you responsible for their deaths. But if you warn them to repent and they don't, they will die in their sins. But you won't be held responsible. The epistle lesson comes from the book of Romans, chapter 13, verses 8 to 14. Paul talks about embodying love which he says is kind of like putting on our Lord Jesus Christ. Here's what he writes. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves one another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are all summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, Love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know that what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake up from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not reveling in drunkenness, nor in debauchery or licentiousness, not in quarreling or jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The gospel for this, the 15th Sunday after Pentecost, is taken from Matthew chapter 18, starting at verse 15. And it's almost like a in case of emergency for conflict in the church. Jesus said to his disciples, If another member of the church sins against you, Go and point out the fault when it's just the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, then let such a one be to you as a Gentile or a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. And let these words be yours and bless. Amen. 
This sermon's about the five-second rule. You know what that is. That any item that falls to the floor or ground that's there less than five seconds and you pick it up, it's okay to eat. Now, I doubt if anyone actually believes that that's true. I don't, and yet I'll pick up that drop French fry or boneless chicken wing and eat it anyway. But remember last week I did say one of my philosophies is what does not kill you makes you strong. Anyway, I recently came across this article about the five-second rule. It seems that some scientists at the University of Illinois recently conduct an actual experiment to prove that as long as the item was picked up and consumed within that five-second count, it was okay to eat. At least the presence of any discernible microorganisms on that piece of food was minimal. Now, there's some parts of that that did not make sense to me. I mean, is it because germs are really slow reacting or, or that they cautiously hesitate before jumping aboard any foreign object? So I decided to look a little closely and read about the protocols of this experiment. It seems that the tests were conducted after first sanitizing the laboratory floor. And it applied only to surfaces like tile or formica. And no tests were done on carpet or cloth, which retain moisture and breed pathogens. Plus, they restricted the item that they thought were commonly dropped and eaten to things like cookies or potato chips or hard candies not gum or, or ice cream or watermelon. Yeah, obviously, dry foods are safer to eat than wet ones. And, and even the wet ones, you might not see pathogens, but you'll see dirt and dust. But it's still always up to the individual's discretion whether to eat that thing or not. This really made me ponder the efficacy of the five-second rule. Because like all the science behind it aside, the results of, of the five-second rule really are contingent upon three things. One, the item that is dropped. Two, the surface upon which it has fallen. And three, the person determining if that item is still good enough to eat. Now, there is a humongous difference between dropping an M&M on a linoleum floor and when your melted s'more falls off the stick into the ground next to your campfire. So like, forget the where and the what about the equation. The bottom line is whether you accept that thing as still edible or not, right? What a wonderful analogy to consider how we treat our brother and sister particularly if we've been wronged. How might the five-second rule apply when we find ourselves hurt by someone else? That it's not really about food as much as it's about accepting other people, particularly those that society says, you know, we should have nothing to do with. It's not just about eating, but seeing what is potentially soiled as perfectly all right. Now, with food, like we said, it's about the item drop, the nature of the floor, and your own inclination. But the most determinative aspect of that is you. Would you still eat it? With sin, the three factors are how you've been wronged, the resulting hurtful situation, and your response. And again, the overwhelming factor is you. Are you able to accept it and the person who did? In today's gospel lesson, it's, it, there's something rather strange about it in that Jesus speaks to his disciples about dealing with church conflict. And the strange thing is the church hadn't even existed yet. And it's a real rare use of that word, ecclesia, the gathered ones that we find here because that would only come later. But the whole gist is what to do if another member of the church sins against you. Now let's just for a moment compare that kind of situation 
to a piece of food that's fallen off your plate. I mean, it shouldn't have happened, it's not desirable, and now demands some sort of response from you. So what do you do? Now Jesus, he outlines this whole standardized procedure to follow. Go to the person quietly, bring one or two people, bring it to the whole church and all this. And it's designed, in a sense, to clean off the discarded article and see if it can be accepted once again, like the five-second rule tries to make. And yet, still making allowances that it could be a lost cause to be thrown away and discarded. The overall gist of that passage and the five-second rule is to find some way to see if you can accept the unacceptable. Because, you know, quite frankly, that's what Jesus is all about. Because, of course, what we're really talking about here is forgiveness. Paul describes what God does in Jesus is reconciling the world to himself. If we are able to accept someone else, it's because we realize and remember that we have been accepted by God. The late Tim Keller once said, true forgiveness must be given before it is felt. It's a choice to accept, to love, even knowing the consequences, to restore what is lost and in the process be restored yourself. Now, there are two critical components to consider when we do this analogy of applying the five-second rule. The first is, instead of just pondering whether we would pick that item up or not, we need to consider the whole thing from the perspective of that item that needs to be picked up, because that's who we are. That's what we are. I mean, let's face it, we are the very fortunate beneficiaries of this rule. We are offensive, sinful, gross pieces of stuff that have fallen into the muck and mire whom Christ sees, picks up, brushes off, and treats as pure. That's how Jesus regards us. He's always seeing sinners that way. Still does. He disregards the common rank-and-file judgments. He confounds all fears of contamination and treats them, treats us, as worthy, even delicious. Because he's God. And as an example to us. What do we do with our enemies? We love them. What do we do with the sick? Look after them. What do we do with the foreigners and strangers among us? Receive them. What do we do about those who hurt us? Forgive them. To me, right up there with eating a dropped hot dog is Jesus' demonstrative action in the upper room. John says he knows it was the end and he loves them and loves them to the end so he washes his disciples dirty smelly feet and says afterwards I do this to give you an example that you should do as I have done I mean that is gross but as I once heard someone say after taking care of his mom the greatest love is often most evident in those you moments the second component is that the timing is important even though five seconds doesn't mean exactly five seconds. If you, it, it's not much better if you can pick that thing up in three seconds. It's not prohibitively wrong if it takes ten seconds to do so. It's just a way of saying, do it quickly. And so, do not delay in making peace. Paul tells the Ephesians, do not let the sun go down on your anger. And that's such good advice. How often we make things worse by delaying those efforts to reconcile and make peace. But like a dropped morsel left there after 10 minutes, a couple hours, a day, no one's going to eat it then. And when it's a grievance that lets set that long, it's even worse. It's not that you won't eat it. 
It starts eating you. Okay, I've just got to tell you my favorite story about the five-second rule. It was back when, we, when I was in the military and we were stationed in Germany. I was posted to an artillery regiment and we were doing war games by the, this base called Grafenvir. We're out in the field for days and we were in this APC. I was with this section of soldiers and we were waiting for orders to move and it was now three or four days sitting in the back of this armored personnel carrier in the rain and the sludge. And it just so happened that we had supper that was a rare cut up bratwurst, sliced and put in some sort of sauce, and we all shared it on bread. But when one of the guys took a bite, a slice slid out of his sandwich and went plop on the bottom of the carrier floor. He cursed, as a military guy would normally do, and then just left it there, grumbling. Another one of us waited for a bit, and then just bent down, scooped that thing up, and put it in his mouth and said, five-second rule, <laughs> even though it's probably longer. And hey, this guy said, and he says, what? He goes, that's disgusting. And he pointed out, well, he didn't want it. And one of us said, you know, do you realize how dirty this floor is? And he said, doesn't matter. And he held up his hands that after four days were, were black and grimy. And for a moment, we all just kind of looked at our own hands that were not as bad, but not clean as well. And um, nobody said anything for a long moment until that guy just smiled and said, yum. I don't believe in the five-second rule, and I hope you don't get out of this sermon that I think every piece of food that falls to the ground is okay to eat, even though I do that more often than I should. However, when it's applied to the rule of accepting others, seeing them as okay, forgiving them, knowing that how much you've been forgiven, and I know that sometimes that is a tough, tough pill to swallow. But there's nothing more spiritually nutritious than that. And it's what Jesus does to the world and to us. Go and make peace. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Refreshed by the living power of Christ working in us, let us offer up our prayers for the church, the world, and for all those in need. Let us pray for the church, that through its ministry of reconciliation through Christ Jesus, O oh Lord, your gracious love may be revealed in every place. Let us pray for those regions of the world where there is civil strife or war or natural disasters. And for all refugees and displaced people that they might find lasting shelter and new hope. Let us pray that as we remember those who have died through acts of terrorism, like what we recall tomorrow, that the prophets and nations of the world may turn again from violence and work for the building up of life for all. Be with those who protect us locally and around the world. Keep them safe as they strive to do the same for us. We pray for those enduring any injury or illness, those recovering from treatments, those suffering from pain. O oh Lord, may your healing power lift their spirits and speed their recovery. Give patience and strength to caregivers, especially family members suffering along with them. We pray, O oh Lord, also for all those who are separated by sin from you, that they might somehow come to know the peace of reconciliation. And maybe it comes through the likes of each of us. May they come to see your love, O oh Lord, reflected in actions, reflected in being accepted. And finally, we give you thanks for all the faithful departed who made known your good and gracious ways. Gather us with them one day into your loving rule, your kingdom, 
of light and light everlasting. Hear us as we offer up our prayers, O Lord, both silent and vocal, and answer as it may be best for us, for we trust in your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold fast to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the fainted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. And may God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless and abide with you to the end. Amen. And that's our worship for today. I hope you keep worshiping. And that five-second rule, forget about food, but instead think about who you can be reconciled with and treat as perfectly edible, even delicious, that may have been discarded. As far as things happening, in two weeks we have Rally Day with our chili cook-off. Hope you can be in tune and, and be a part of that. There's still a list of people for contesting the, the chili. Um, women's Bible study starts tomorrow, Monday night. Um, Cardboard wars are coming up in a few weeks. Bear in mind with that, and, and we got plenty of cardboard to use, and, and should be an event for our youth to be, be fully on board with that. And, and a heads up, we are going to be having a, a Narcolong, Narcolexone class on dealing with drug possible abuse with, within even our community here. So the details for that are upcoming, but it'll be Wednesday, October 4th. Stay tuned for more details or check our website. But for whatever it is, as, as fall begins, and eventually school will start in our area, but as fall begins, um, may you find your temperatures cooling as your heart warms and showing love to one another. God bless you. Go in peace.